Alrighty, check out this hand that I played with Pocket 8s. We're playing 2-5, No Limit Texas Hold'em. We find ourselves in the big blind with the snowmen. It's folded to the button, who makes the limp and the small white completes. With a pocket pair here, I'm going to bump the action up to 25. Both players call, so we're going to go three ways to a flop with 75 in the middle. It comes Ace-9-5. Yeah, we're sitting with third pair, but the Ace is going to look really good for us, so we put in that C-bet for 50. To my surprise, both players make the call, which we don't really feel great about, and we're further diminishes from our chance of winning with the turn is another nine. So really feeling like we're not beating a whole lot, small blind checks, we decide to check for pot control, and the button just open rips it for about 200. Small blind folds, and in this spot, I don't think there's a lot we can do. We can't really beat much, so I decide to let it go. The small blind and the button conversate about how big their aces were, and I'm just sitting over here like, yeah, I had pocket eights. <laughs> Maybe the better thing to do would have been to go all in. I don't know, who knows? Do you want to see me play your favorite hand? Leave it in a comment down below and I will give it my best shot. While you're there, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel for more content. Without further ado, let's continue with the video. Alrighty, we're gonna get a slight rebate on the previous hand. This time in orbit later, we've got sevens in the big blind facing an under the gun limp and a cutoff limp. Under the gun player seems to be fairly inexperienced, so I doubt he's gonna go for the limp re-raise, so we bump it up to 20. Under the gun does make the call, as well as the cutoff. So we're going three ways out of position with 60 in the middle this time to a flop that comes queen 5-5. Five, five. Low paired boards are generally gonna be good for the pre-flop aggressor, so we continue for 35. To my surprise, both players make the call again, so definitely feeling like I'm drawing pretty slim on this dry of a board, so my plan is to give up. Okay, just kidding. Uh, when the turn's a seven, that is super lucky, and now we're sitting with an absolutely crazy disguised full house. I put out a relatively small bet relative to the size of the pot, we bet 85. I don't want to push out either player, and I want to set up a good stack to pot ratio for a jam on the river if both players call. Under the gun does make the call, which we'd love to see, but the cutoff senses danger correctly and lets it go. Heads up out of position to the final card, which is a pretty irrelevant nine. We're gonna stick to the new game plan here and we ship it in for the low, low price of the rest of the under the gun stack, which at this point was only about 125. He says he's just gotta see it, makes the call, and he shows us 510 of clubs for flop trips. I think this is a good case of the better hand wins at the end, although there was some high fluctuation in the middle. Nevertheless, we're taking a big pot here commandingly and we're moving on strong. Alrighty, riding the highs of the session, we find ourselves in middle position not too much later with ace-queen offsuit facing an under-the-gun straddle, and we elect to bump it up to 35. Player from the previous hand who we just stacked calls and the straddler calls, so we're taking ace-queen offsuit three ways in between the two with about 100 in the middle to a flop that comes 9-7-3 with two hearts. When the straddler checks to me, I should be c-betting here as there aren't really a ton of made hands that are really going to be crushing us. I mean, I guess the only ones really are 9-7 in any of the sets, but... I should be C betting here, but I don't as I figure at the time that betting on a board that connects more with my opponent's ranges when I especially have the nut flush blocker is not going to be very good. So I check and the last player in the hand checks. So we're going to get a free card, which comes to five of hearts. So the straddler checks. Now let's just take, take a step back and think about this for a minute, okay? We've got ace queen offsuit with enough flush draw. Yeah, but six eight got there for a straight, seven five as two pair. The front door flush did come in. So this is a card that really is gonna complete a lot of my opponent's draws. So what do we do? <laughs> Bet, duh. At the time I was kind of just like, oh, me monkey, me have nut flush draw, me bet chips. And so I bet 60. And let me just give you guys a little tip. Before you do something, and this can this can be in life too, not just playing poker, like just look around you for a second. Just be aware of what's around you. I totally didn't look at the person stacked to my left and they only have like 120 behind. So when I bet 60, they just rip it in for pretty much the same amount that I just bet on top. Straddler folds and like, I'm not gonna fold for like 50 more, I think. So uh, yeah, I make the call. They turn over pocket fives for a set, which you know, whatever. He agrees to give me two boards to try to hit a heart though, which I can't seem to find, and we donate back a little bit of what we took in the previous hand. Alrighty, we're going to take a quick look at a slightly downgraded hand from the one before. We've got Queen-10 offsuit in the big blind facing four limpers. That's right, we're not going to raise over here. We check our options, so we're going to see a flop five ways to 25 in the middle, and the flop comes Queen-7-8. We've got top pair, that's cool. With my mediocre kicker, I decide that I'm just going to check to see what develops. Player to my left checks, and the next player decides to test the field and bet 15. 
player to his left calls, the last limper folds, I decide I'm gonna make the call with top pair, so I call, and then the player to my left folds. So, three ways fully out of position to a turn, that comes another seven. I play in flow and check, the player who bit the flop decides to check, and the last player checks. Final card incoming, that comes a five. I think at this point my top pair could actually be good, but I don't necessarily know if I want to bet myself as I don't know if we could call by anything worse, you know? Maybe there are some eights that missed a draw that could call, maybe there are some worse queens, but it has to be like exactly queen nine. So uh, I decide in this spot that I'm just going to take the check call line. So I check, the player that bet the flop continues his aggression for 20, last player gets out of the way, and I keep up my end of the deal and go check call. We get the bad news as we're just barely losing to queen jack. Honestly though, I think in this spot, if I were to lead the river, I would get called, and I think I'd lose about the same amount anyway, so I think the hand just played out how it was gonna play out, and it wasn't gonna change very much. Alrighty, you ready guys? We've got the Brad Owen special. We've got Jax in the small blind facing a button limp, and being out of position, I bump it up to 25. Big blind folds, and the button calls. We're going heads up out of position with the jiggies with 50 in the middle to an absolute dream flop. That comes king queen nine that's right we've got a third pair and we go for some value and bet 40. unfortunately we couldn't get any as the button folds pretty quick see you guys playing jacks is easy what are you talking about Alrighty, exactly one orbit later we find ourselves back in the small blind with an actually upgraded version of the hand we just had that's right we've got ace jack offsuit in the small blind facing two limps and a button raised to 15. now I don't really want to do a lot of calling in the small blind as no matter what we do we're going to be out of position for the entire hand so the least we can do is have the betting lead and an uncapped range. So we three bet to 65. Both the limpers get out of the way. The button takes a little bit of time before making the call. So we're gonna go heads up out of position as the pre-flop three better with about 140 in the pot to a flop that comes an absolute monster jack 10-6. That's right, feels good to three bet a little light and flop top top. We down bet to 50 for some value and the small blind thinks for a little bit and then makes the call. As if our hand couldn't get any better, their turn comes an absolutely miraculous ace giving us a monster top two pair. We size up now 175 and the button announces he simply just cannot call and he folds. Nonetheless, feels good to scoop a three bet pot with an absolutely monster hand. Alrighty, keeping up the repertoire with the jacks, we find ourselves with jack eight off suit in the big blind facing two limpers and we check it. Going three ways out of position to a flop that comes jack 10 four with two spades. Not bad. Honestly, I decide to get a little out of line here, and I leave for 10. Both players make the call. I'm not really sure what I want to do with this hand post-flop. When the turn comes to 7 of spades, giving us additional equity to flush and straight draws, I decide to keep going, and I bet big for 40. Player to my left makes the call, and the last player in the hand folds. Heads up to the 5 of spades. We do make our flush, but honestly, not feeling terribly confident about it. A lot of hands that are going to beat us on this kind of board. We check. And our opponent snap checks it back, which is nice, but they actually show us jack nine with the nine of spades to just barely beat our ace eight high flush. Definitely got a little bit out of line, but you know, live and learn, I guess. You know, I was looking back over some of the hands I've played in this vlog and it occurred to me that we seem to pick up ace king quite a bit. This hand is no exception as we've got ace king of hearts, beautiful hand in the big blind facing two limpers and we bump the action up to $30. Both players make the call. We're taking ace king three ways to a flop out of position with 90 in the middle that comes two three five no hearts you know we got a straight draw but low boards are always going to be welcome as the pre-flop aggressor so we can play more range on range a small bet should get the job done here with lot so we bet 30. we're right the job is done as both players elect to fold pretty quickly you know we seem to pick up ace king quite a bit on this vlog this hand is no exception, that's right, we've got Ace King of Hearts, and there's no mistake, it's the second time in a row, now in the small blind with the Ace King of Hearts facing a limp and a middle position raised to 20. For reasons we already discussed, not going to be calling here, we bump it up to $65. Both players make the call, so the very next hand, we're taking Ace King of Hearts three ways out of position to another flop, this time with about 200 in the middle, that comes Jack 9-6 with two diamonds. Pretty terrible board. For ace king of hearts let me tell you and i actually learned from our previous mistakes and i just take a moment instead of just uh, monkey c betting to just look at my opponents and the initial razor looks pretty damn ready to just rip his short stack in there so we make an exploitative check and as if we weren't profits already the initial razor does indeed rip his short stack in there for about 150. 
I'm not gonna call here with just two dry overs, so I let it go, but you guys are gonna get to see it as the other player in the hand thinks for a little bit and then does make the call. So they're going to a run out one time for all the marbles that runs out an eight and a three. The player that jam turns over King Jack and the other player Muck. So he's gonna win that big pot scooping a Jack. You know, we did our best. We bet chips when we were ahead and we folded while we were behind. There's really not much else you can do, right? We decided not too long after that to rack up and get on out of there. Hey, how's it going guys? We are in Lake Jessup Wilderness area over in Sanford, Florida. Just dropped off a couple people at the airport and it's pretty close. So I figured I'd walk over and record a vlog here while I was over here. It's a pretty cool little place. There's a uh, boat loading dock over there. We got some nice open area if you've got like a dog or something. And that's where I was just walking over there in that wilderness trail. But like I said, it was a little wet. So kind of walked around it, didn't walk the full thing. Maybe another day we'll come back out here after it, uh, you know, doesn't rain. Oh, I'm gonna get in that tree and do the outro. All right, hold on. Alrighty guys, that's gonna about do it for today. We we're into the game for $700, out of the game for 600, booking a small loss of $100 over the course of four hours and 15 minutes, which comes out to about $23 an hour or 4.7 big blinds per hour. Thanks for taking a rather short walk with me through Lake Jessup Wilderness area. Appreciate it. You are a fantastic human being. And as always, keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy. This is Runner Runner Poker. Have a good one. Bro, I hope I don't step in something and then like get poisoned or get bitten or die. You know? That is a concern.